I'm excited to do it. Are like, you I'm, I'm amped, yeah. Show me your excitement. I'm excited, man. And we're back. Here I am, Fly Navarro. We're getting ready to talk about fly time. That's right. Tell me what it is we got here. All right. What do you got? Laid out here are all the basic tools that you're going to need to start flying, tying flies uh, and to continue to tie flies the rest of your life because it's an addiction. You're going to be hooked the second you start trying it. Uh, that was a pun. You're hooked. Good. Yeah. Gotcha. Didn't even catch that one. You did. <laughs> There's another one. Catch. All right. Here we go. All right. So the, the first thing you're going to probably need is a good vise. Okay. This here is just a simple basic clamp vise. It'll mount onto a desk, coffee table, any surface that it can clip onto right here. Uh, it's got simple uh, jaws here, hook fits in there, lock it down, that's it. Uh, here is also another little fancier, nicer version that actually lays horizontal. Okay. So if you're working with these, they're non-rotary vices. They don't spin. What, okay, explain to me what rotary. They don't spin 360 degrees like this. Okay. So if you're working on the top of the fly, you'd have it hooked in here one way. And if you want to add material to the bottom, You'll undo it, take the hook out, flip it over, and, and then, put it back in the vise, and you continue. The uh, the vices like this are the rotary vices, and what's really nice about these is if you're tying an intricate fly where you need to be adding material to all sides of it, you can turn this any which way, lock them down, and they will stay there for as long as you want. Okay. Uh, a couple little things like this one has here is a spring that actually so you can put your material into it so it stays out of the way. It's just to keep it less cluttered while you're working. Uh, both of these have what's called a bobbin cradle. So if you want to get the thread out of the way, you keep it over here. When you need to do something, wrap a hackle, add eyes, whatever like that. Glue you're going to tell me what a hackle is later. I'm going to go over everything. Okay, not a problem. Yep. Keep on moving. You can lay the bobbin over here, get it out of the way, do whatever you need to do. And when you're done, swing it back out of the way. It's also a pretty great place to just hang flies when you're done tying them. If you're doing like a dozen or something, okay. you can put them there. Uh, this also has a backdrop. So if you work at a really cluttered desk like I do at my house, it kind of just keeps the, uh, the background from getting in the way of tying all that detail because right. some of them can be super intricate. Uh, after you get a good vise, the next thing you're going to want to do is get some good scissors. These are uh, both loon. They're stainless steel, super sharp. This is the needle point one, which would be for getting really fine detail close up. And this is the razor scissor, which would be for cutting down hairs, trimming things to shape, some of the materials you work with. You basically tie a big puff ball, and then you cut the shape out of it you want. Okay. What's really nice about these is if they get dull, have a little knot, a uh, little bolt right there, give them a few clicks, and they're sharp again. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. These are plain stainless steel ones that I picked up at a CVS God knows how many years ago for 20 just, bucks. Just a regular old. Just regular old good sharp scissors. You want to make sure they're stainless steel. They hold the edge better. Okay. Um, you also have little things like hackle pliers. There's a bunch of different uh, versions of these. So what you do with these is basically when you've got a hackle on here and you want to use it to make a collar onto a fly, you would clip this onto the end and it gives it some weight. So as you're wrapping the feather, a hackle's a feather, as you're wrapping it around the shank of the hook to create the collar or the body of the fly, if you let go, this is hanging and it provides a little weight so the whole thing doesn't come unwrapped on you. Uh, we have a whip finishing tool, which would basically be used to put half hitches in the, the fly when you're done to tie the thread off. Okay. Uh, they're super simple to use. You can either buy the tool or there's a way to do half hitches with your hand that I think is a lot easier. Um, you don't have to buy one of those when you do. Then there's Bodkins, which are basically uh, metal toothpicks used to straighten feathers, uh, put glue on, anything you need, really fine little detail, straighten hairs out. Uh, we have a dubbing loop. I'm just straightening my hair out. <laughs> we have a dubbing loop spinner. So that would be used to make a dubbing loop, which I'll show you how to do a little later on. And that's basically if you wanted to create your own uh, body out of some scrap material you have or out of uh, flash material to add like a scale pattern to the to the fly uh, you create the loop lock the material in it spin this and then you just wrap it around the fly so we'll go over that that's better than going to the gym 
Yeah, pretty much. It uh, takes a little dexterity too to hold this, have the loop open. and So then we have a deer hair stacker, which basically when you uh, tie in certain flies and you want everything nice and level, you put bucktail material in there and you slam it on the counter. Really? Yep. Okay. And it puts everything nice and flush so you're working with all even lengths. All right. After that, probably the most important thing next to the scissors and the vise are the bobbins. Are the what? The bobbins. The bobbins, okay. So there's a ton of different ones you can get. I recommend everyone stays away from the ones that are just metal and don't have any kind of insert or at least don't have a rounded edge. Uh, you can put thread in this and no matter how good the thread is, at some point when tying, this bobbin will cut the thread. Interesting. Um, there are ones like this that are full ceramic. It's a little PVC pipe and then inside is ceramics. Uh, and it's the same with this one. Inside the stainless steel is a little ceramic ring and that just protects your fly line from, or your, uh, your thread from fraying and breaking off on you when you're trying to do something. Cool beans. And then the last thing you need, you get really any number of options you can do with this for foam, is when you're done tying the flies and you've got head cement on them and they're drying, you can stick them in the foam and just let them over there on the side. Um, this I've had for probably 20 years and it started out You're this You're not big. even 20 years old. Don't tell me you had that for 20 years. 30 years old this year, man. All right. So it started out this big and all these years later, it's whittled down to this little chunk. Kind of like me. I used to be as tall as you are. Well, what happened? I, I got whittled down. You got whittled down? <laughs> Time wears on you, man. Uh, and then this right here is a drying wheel. You plug it into the wall. It's got a little motor that will sit and spin this wheel. So if you're using like a single or a two-part epoxy, that's not a UV that'll dry with uh, a UV light. So you can put them in here and it'll spin it, keep it from plumping up on one side. So the next day when you come back, all the flies will have nice, uniformed, clean heads. Beautiful. And that's it. That's the basic tools. A couple other ones uh -oh. that I almost forgot here that help. Man, I almost signed off on you. I, my bad, man. Go for I, it. Uh, when you're working with some of the artificial hairs, like an EP fiber, they can get knotted up. So a lice comb. Oh, I like that. I need one of those. 99 cents at the gas or the, uh, yes. the pharmacy, and it straightens everything out, and you're good to go. The other one is this old pair of wire strippers. Uh, I use the cutter to cut bead chain to make eyes. Okay. And then the flat section back here, when I make a weed guard out of monofilament, put the mono in there, pinch it so it's flat. It takes up less room when you're tying, so it's all about you can make the fly streamline. Right. Now it, we're done. We sure? 100%. We got one thing left. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs>